Tom Taylor and Sian Tomi finished the fight against Henry Bendix as Superman and Gossamer's assault on Gamora to liberate its people takes an even deadlier turn. Tom Taylor finishes up the Gamora saga with a wholly satisfying issue, tying up all of his loose ends through some classic Superman heroics and interesting story beats that also look to set up some future stuff for the Son of Kal-El book after we get through the Kal-El Returns event series beginning next issue. Taylor did a fantastic job reminding us of Superman's trust in those around him, as well as his belief that they will do what is right when faced with evil. It's something I've really loved seeing John develop over the course of this series as well as his appearances elsewhere with him sort of becoming that Superman that everyone knows and loves and in that he instills certain values in people like people want to be better when they're around him and here is no difference as he's basically reformed the revolutionaries into a group who don't really want to kill anymore which I thought was a really cool use of Taylor's created characters that he created back in the Suicide Squad and bringing them back here and giving them an extended story that's connected to Bendix and then progressing that story and developing it even more was fantastic which of course makes this book basically a team book with the revolutionaries being part of Superman's little team he set up. Henry Bendix being John's first big villain was pretty great and a pretty cool idea for a first villain it kind of fills that Lex Luthor role while it's being wholly different as well and I love getting the realization here at the end that this man thought he was really well equipped to take on someone of Superman's level but to paraphrase Lex from this issue you can't really just barrel headfirst into total world domination you got to take your time something which Bendix really didn't get to do and I like that he thought he could just because he was fighting a younger less experienced Superman when that really wasn't the case at all. Taylor also sets up some stuff with John and his powers going forward with maybe a new power being unlocked or maybe even a whole new set of powers being unlocked something only time will tell to us but either way I'm excited since gaining a new power or losing old ones or losing powers outright is almost a rite of passage for a Superman at this point so it's only fair John gets to go through that as well. Sian Tormi caps off the Gamora saga with some more fantastic artwork that felt like the culmination and climactic ending to the story. There were some great tension filled moments between Jay and his monstrous mother and a hell of a lot of cool action throughout the issue. Even with some callbacks to classic Superman tropes like Superman battling a death laser in space and even that Batman slapping Robin mean got some love thanks to Damien this issue which was really fun to see. Superman Son of Kal-El issue 15 was a fantastic ending to the Gamora arc, tying off the story really well while teasing out some cool new ideas for future storylines, all while leaving us on an image that celebrates John's ongoing job as Superman. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10. Superman Son of Kal-El issue 15 finds Superman and Gossamer confronting the now post-human Sarah Nakamura, with Jay giving up his secret identity to Bendix when he calls her his mother. Superman goes to stop Sarah but Jay stops him, quietly telling him that Bendix is in her mind which means he's not focusing elsewhere, so he will keep him busy while Superman goes and frees the scientists and find out where the controllers for the post-humans are controlling them from. Superman gets to work, rescuing the scientists nearby as Jay confronts his Bendix controlled mother. Other, telling him that thanks to his powers that Henry gave him, he can't be touched, so what will he do now? Bendix demands that Jay turn himself solid since he's caused him a lot of inconvenience and his mother is ready to dole out some punishment. Jay refuses to fight her but Bendix demands he turn solid or he'll blow her head off with the bomb inside of it. Jay solidifies and Sarah is forced to attack him as Superman Mumo gets the scientists to safety, asking them where Bendix is controlling his army from. One scientist says that Henry will be in his tower and the rest of his controllers will be in the bunker deep underground. Superman spots it with his x-ray vision as the woman tells him that the structure is designed with people like Superman in mind and it will collapse if he tries to burrow down to it. John demands to know why that's the case and the woman tells him it's because Bendix is a sick bastard who wanted the controllers to have the threat of death literally hanging over their head in case they try to escape but he does have a DNA locked teleporter to get himself and other controllers in and out so if Superman's got a teleporter 
however, he can get in. Superman speeds off to meet with the revolutionaries who are continuing to battle the Gamora Corps through the city. Superman asks Wink for her help, so the post-human teleports him into the bunker in an instant, where he protects Wink from oncoming gunfire, telling the soldiers that he won't hurt any of them, severing the connections with the controllers. The Gamora Corps all become freed from Bendix's control, asking what happened and where they are as Dreamer and the revolutionaries help them out. Lex contacts Henry, telling him that he's done for, as he's seen everything unfold via satellite, and thanks to it, messages have been sent to all of Henry's potential buyers, and no one wants to do business with him now. Luther cuts his communications as the angered Bendix attacks Jay through his mother, demanding to know if the boy understands what he just cost him. Jay plays around with Bendix, not knowing what he cost him, but he does want to hear about it. Sarah soon regains control as Bendix cuts his feed, allowing the mother and son to reunite once more. Bendix, however, was pulled from his control thanks to Robin, who cut his control accord. Robin says that he has heard the man has been trying to hurt one of his best friends, and as Henry tries to come at him with a gun, Robin merely slaps him down, asking if that's all the man's got. Bendix runs away, demanding someone kill him, but Robin notes how his people have the look of people who are completely done with him and his orders. Bendix, however, makes it to his teleporter before Robin can get to him, teleporting up to Skywatch. Superman, meanwhile, is called by Dreamer, who tells the arriving hero that she doesn't know what's about to happen, but it's seconds away and it's big, knowing that it includes a burning death from above. On Skywatch, Bendix orders the satellite to target Gamora and fire. So Superman sees the giant laser powering up, and this is the future Dreamer saw. Superman stops the laser with his own body, feeling it burn throughout his entire body as Bendix screams for him just to die. Lex arrives on the satellite, telling him that Kryptonians are notoriously hard to kill, something he knows from experience. He demands to know what Henry is doing since it looks like he is taking the literal scorched earth approach to Gamora in order to cover his tracks. Lex reminds the man that he warned him not to rush into world domination since while messing up this is bad, he almost implicated Lex in all of it. Bendix thinks he's being threatened, but Lex thinks they are past that, wanting to just take what the man has built and improve it, citing him as a great beta tester. Henry tries to have his security systems target Lex, but Lex is already in control of the station, ordering it to open the airlock. Henry is blasted out of the airlock into the cold, dead void, as Lex says that he can't hear Henry complaining since it's space. Superman, meanwhile, continues to hold back the laser, but he doesn't think he can hold it for much longer. Suddenly, something begins happening, and he feels some type of fire building in his eyes and his fingertips, like something is building inside of him. Lex looks on, impressed that the super teen is willing to sacrifice himself to save others, knowing he'll definitely take advantage of that in the future, as he is teleported back down to LexCorp, allowing Skywatch to self-destruct. Superman soon returns to Robin, who notes the hero is currently smoking, as John tells him about the classic doomsday ray he stopped, and that he searched the debris for Henry, but found nothing, knowing that he is gone. John tries to tell Damien about what happened to him when he got hit by the laser, but finds it hard to describe. But Robin tells him he's Superman, so he needs to think harder, as the rest of the revolutionaries interrupt their conversation. Dreamer assumes that because they are alive, Superman changed the future, as Superman thanks her for the heads up, asking Ozita if everyone is alive, and the woman assures Superman that while they didn't pull punches, no no one died. Superman thanks her for that as Jay and Sarah join them, and John notices that Bendix found a way to hurt him, noticing his bruises, but Jay notes how John isn't exactly unscathed either, introducing John to his mother. John is glad he's finally meeting President Nakamura as he notices a lot of people with phones and cameras are watching them. Jay thinks that overthrowing a dictator will attract attention, as John notices that Jay lost his disguise, but Jay doesn't care anymore, telling John that he's not hiding just like Superman isn't, since Superman is there for the whole world and the least he can do is be there by his side, as the two heroes share a kiss in front of the world's media. 